Hey everybody, Chad here from the Electric Academy. The two topics I find I get asked the most about, one is motor control, two is three-phase power. I've done a ton of three-phase power videos. I have done a ton of motor control videos. You can see the three-phase power videos up at the top there. You just click on that eye. Same thing, wait a second here, and you can see the playlist for the motor control videos. Click on that eye there as well. But today what I thought I would do is because I had a student ask me yesterday about three phase motor connections and he asked about the nine lead connection because he had heard from work that they've got these nine lead connections and he wondered how they worked. So we're going to split this up into like a two part mini series. I'm going to do one on a Y connection and one on a Delta connection. I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of three phase power. So if you don't, make sure you go back to the playlist and check it out just to get a rudimentary understanding. Again, you can check those out up top there and click on that link and then come on back to this video and we'll go over the nine lead motor. Now the best way I can describe the nine lead motor is to get off the screen and to get onto the white screen. So I'll see you on the inside there. Okay, here we are. We've got two different configurations. We've got a Delta configuration and we've got a Y configuration. In this video, we're just going to be going over the Y configuration. We're going to go over the Delta configuration in a later video. So again, today's the Y configuration. It's a nine lead motor because we have actually two windings per phase. See here, we've got one winding, two windings, three windings, four windings, five windings, six windings in total, which means we have one lead, two leads, three leads, four leads, five leads, six leads, seven leads, eight leads, nine leads. We have ourselves a Y configuration connection with nine leads. It's a nine lead motor connection. Very, very common. So let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. With the nine lead motor, it allows us to connect to two different voltages depending on the situation that we need. Now in this case, a very common motor that you might see out there would be say a 230 volt, 460 volt motor. Now when you look at the nameplate, the motor, if it's a nine lead motor, it will state on it that it'll have a 230, 460 on it which means that you can connect this motor to 230 volts, the lower voltage, or 460 volts, the higher voltage. Now what we're gonna go over today is how to connect to both these voltages, not at the same time obviously, but how we can get these lined up. Because you wanna make sure that if you're using, if you've got it connected as a 230 volt, you're not gonna connect it to 460. So that would be very bad, you would let all the smoke out of the wire if you did that. Now what we're going to do here is, the first step when we're working off these, is we number our leads. Now I'm going to show you the, the convention that I was taught and that I teach. So what we do is we start at the top and that would be number one. Number one's right there. And then we work counterclockwise. So we end up with two there, three there. And then we start doing the swirly method or the toilet bowl method or whatever, but you're kind of working a spiral into it. So we end up with this being four, this lead being five, this lead being six, this lead being seven, this lead being eight, this lead being nine. So we've worked our way around the leads and we've got it down. Now we have a 10, 11, and 12. That would be 10, 11, and 12. But you notice that they're all internally connected to that star point. So we don't really count them. I don't really draw them out or talk about them that much. Um, but just know that they do exist and that they are connected. And that's what con connects this into a Y configuration. Now what we need to do is we need to figure, are we connecting to a lower voltage or a higher voltage? And if we're going to uh, connect to a higher voltage or lower voltage, that means we're going to be connecting these leads in parallel or in series. Now we're gonna start with the lower voltage first because I find it's the trickier the voltages to deal with here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase this out of the way. Uh, so what we're going to do here is when we're dealing with voltages in parallel, the one thing we have to remember is parallel voltages remain the same. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, if we're connecting these in parallel, we're gonna have a situation where we have our windings. So these windings here will be in parallel with those windings. These windings will be in parallel with those windings. These windings will be in parallel with those windings. What I like to do and what I teach my students to do is I have them draw out, because they're very familiar with how these loads work if you have this so we have that set of windings and then we're going to go off here and we're going to take these and we have that set of windings and then another 120 degrees we have this set of windings i'm going to start at the top and i'm going to say okay i've got one and four here. So let's just change my color here. 
one and four, that's that winding, and I'm gonna connect one to seven. And then seven's gonna go to that lead that's at the bottom there. We're not gonna count that. I don't wanna confuse us, so I don't have it written out, so I'm not gonna draw it. I know some who teach this would draw in the 10 and 11, 12 leads. I'm not gonna do that. So over, we move over to two. So I've got, say, two here, and I'm gonna go counterclockwise again. So this would be, I've got two and five. Well, two I'm gonna to connect to eight, and then it connects to the, again, the phantom lead, if you wanna call it. And then I've got three, so I'm gonna call it three, and six and I'm going to connect that to nine and the other lead there so this shows us now that we are going to parallel one and seven we're going to parallel two and eight and we're going to parallel three and six and you notice here that we're also going to connect five four and nine together so if we drew this out and bear with me because this drawing might not be the best but I will take basically one and seven, and I'm gonna go two and eight, and I'm gonna go three and nine across there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect four, five, and six together. So four, five, and six together. And then we've got that connected properly for our lower voltage because we have these in parallel. Remember, voltages in parallel stay the same. So if I look up here at this here, line one, line two, line three, line one, line two, line three would be our three-phase power coming in. So I would have, say, line one, that would be L1, line two, L2, and line three, L3. So we see that we're connecting our L1, and it gets connected to one and seven, so one and seven. L2 connects to two and eight. Two and eight. And L3 connects to three and nine. And then we see that we're connecting and joining four, five, and six together. And we're done. And there you go. That's the hardest part of the Y connection is making sure you understand that whole parallel connection. Now our next one is super easy. We're gonna go over and it's going to be the higher voltage. Now higher voltages, when they are in series, you add them. So if we have two voltages, say that each one of these windings is rated for 230 volts. Well, 230 plus 230 is going to give us 460. So we do the exact same thing as we did before. We're gonna number it and we should be getting ourselves to be quite expert at this right now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and then our phantom leads on the inside that are all connected. So when we try to connect these out, it's the same idea as before. I don't even have to redraw the circuit. We just know that if we've got 230 volts here and we want to get 460 across it. Each winding is rated at 230. We're just gonna connect them in parallel, or sor sorry, we're gonna connect them in series. So that becomes very easy. Watch this, we're just gonna go boop, and boop, and Oop, right? So we've got those connected. And again, we can connect our line one, line two, line three. There's our L1. We'll go like this. This is L2. And we can connect this, and this is L3. So our line one connects to one, line two connects to two, line three connects to three. And then for our joining po points, we are gonna connect four to seven, four and seven. We're gonna connect five and eight, and we're gonna connect six and nine. Six and nine, and then we're done. And we've got it all connected up for a higher voltage. So again, they're not too hard to deal with when we're dealing with the whole nine lead connection. Quite easy, actually, if you're doing, if you understand how parallel and series circuits work. If you don't have an understanding of how parallel and series circuits work, go ahead and you should see a little eye in the bar up top there that's gonna be a link to a parallel series connection for you. That's all I have for this week. Next week, we will be going over the Delta connection, which is a little trickier, but not too much more so, and we'll go from there. As always, if you're getting any value from these videos, make sure that you are clicking on subscribe, ringing that bell, and please leave a link down in the, the comments below. I'd love to hear, are you working on nine lead motors? And if you are working on nine lead motors, 
Are you dealing with Y configurations or Delta configurations more often out in the field? Have a great week, everybody. Chad here from the Electric Academy telling you to stay classy.